<clears throat> uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 196, Introduction to Designing Web Graphics for the Spring Semester 2022. Um, anyway, today we can continue with our orientation a little bit, but um, then I want to focus on what you should be working on this week, which is optimizing um, images for the web. So I will highlight some of the things that you need to know or you should walk away with. And at the same time, um, from previous semesters, I have recorded videos for you to watch, um, especially for those of you who have no experience with Photoshop. If you're taking Photoshop now, um, that's really good because the tools that we'll cover are really very basic, but um, it's, they're important to know, especially for web design. Um, web design <coughs> um, utilizes a variety of different um, software packages. Um, if you're really good, you, you could just you can design a website simply by putting in the code. Um, but other tools make it a little bit easier and make your website look a little bit more um, interesting and robust. So first things first, I want to make sure that um, you know where my website is, that you've, um, if you haven't um, emailed me um, to be put on our uh, Google Drive, our shared Google Drive folder, please do so. Um, the sooner you get that done, the better. Um, again, email me at kirkmillerart at gmail.com. And um, I will send you an invitation to join our shared Google Drive folder. Um, that's where you're going to put this um, optimized image assignment. After that, um, when we actually complete the websites, you will be emailing me at that email address and simply putting in the, the subject uh, what it is we're doing, like your name, Art196, and Wix website, and then in the content you'll put the link to your Wix website and that will be it. So for right now though, in order to have, um, while we're working on the lessons and as you're doing, um, creating these additional websites, what I want you to check out is that when you go to my website here, this is a, a, the easiest way I think to access all of my video tutorials <clears throat> is under Kirk's classes, um, click on video tutorials here. And it will take you to my playlists, my list of playlists for um, my YouTube um, channel. So um, if we scroll up here, we can see that here is, this is for this semester. So as I'm recording this now, this is where this will be placed um, in Art 196 Introduction to Web Design for the Spring 2022. That's just these little ancillary lectures that I have. But then if you scroll down and you can see that I have um, <coughs> um, videos for 3D modeling and for Illustrator and for Photoshop. But what you'll be interested in looking at is looking at, for example, the full playlist right here for Art 196, Introduction to Web Design for the Fall 2021 um, semester. And if I click on view full playlist, some of you may have already done this. Um, you'll see here's my orientation lecture. Here is the lecture that I would be giving today, which is optimizing images for the web. And then um, next week we'll be covering HTML basics and then CSS basics. Um, these tutorials, um, with the exception of the optimizing for web, you just, you, there's nothing that you will turn in. It's only when we complete lesson seven and I show you how to publish that lesson that you will turn that in. And if it works, you, you'll get full credit. But um, if you want to look back to even earlier videos, because again, I make mistakes. Um, some of them work better than others. In fact, here is one for, uh, which one was this? This was for the fall, this is Art 196 for the fall 2021, or no, 
fall and spring 2021. So um, even an earlier one. So we have one here, we have one here. And again, if I look at this one here, they, it will almost be the same. And I probably make all the same mistakes. Okay. Or this is fall 20. Um, so this goes back even a little bit further. Um, anyway, here's your, this is done in reverse. I need to switch this. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. There we go. There's the orientation lecture. Here's optimizing images for the web, HTML basics, CSS basics. Um, this is the basic, you know, I need to reorganize these, I guess. I didn't do that. But anyway, you'll find them all here. Okie doke. So let me go back. Um, are there any questions so far um, that, I, that I've, of things I've covered, or maybe you have um, questions about what's involved or how to access me, or I don't know. You need to tell me. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about for just a few minutes today is I'm gonna go into Photoshop here. And I will go back online in a couple of minutes, but I wanted to cover just some of the main points. This is what you should be working on this week, which is learning how to optimize images for the web. Um, generally, um, the measurement of, of images for the web is done in pixels since the measurement of monitors is done in pixels. Um, you can measure in inches if you want, but it really um, will be easier to translate. Um, what you should know about images that are placed on the web is that the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Doesn't need to be any more, doesn't need to be any less. Um, for those of you who have taken Illustrator or Photoshop and you're accustomed to working in print, then that resolution generally will start at maybe 240 pixels per inch and go up to 300 and even in some cases 600 pixels per inch. Okay, but for images for the web, they need only be 72 pixels per inch. And if you measure them, measure them in, um, in pixels. Okay, it will be easier when you're actually inserting, inserting them into your page. The other thing that you should know about are the different file types that are, that are used in images for the web. You can't upload Photoshop files or, excuse me, Illustrator files on the web. The PSD files and AI files and any other file formats will not work. Only for still images, the only file formats that we will concern ourselves with are JPEGs, GIFs, and PNG. Um, to a certain extent, they are all interchangeable, but when you watch my video, you'll see that some have great, uh, strengths, um, others uh, that others don't. So for example, in most cases for photographic images, you will use a JPEG and that's either JPG or JPEG. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of like the standard. Um, in certain instances, you will use GIFs. This is one of the oldest file formats. What distinguishes it from the JPEG? Um, generally speaking, GIF files are a little bit larger than JPEGs. You can't compress them as much as JPEGs. But what this file format offers you that these don't is that if you had have transparency in your file, because JPEGs can only be rectangles. But if you wanted, for example, a circle or you know, a round circle in circular image, then a GIF or a ping would be the way to go because these are the only file formats that permit um, transparency. What distinguishes ping from GIF, which is the most current file format that's acceptable for the web, <coughs> is that <coughs> if you want partial opacity, or added some transparency in addition to you know, total um, transparency, the ping files 24-bit are the only way that you can do that. 
So you may have a photograph that you want to put up on the web, <clears throat> but instead of using a rectangle, you want to create an irregular shape, a circle or a triangle or something, I don't know, um, a star shape. Well, you would probably, you would generate your original file in Photoshop, save it as a Photoshop file as your original, and then <clears throat> output it as a ping file, 24 bit. The file size will be larger than it would be as a JPEG, but you'll have your unique shape. Okay. Any questions so far? No. The other thing is um, how you name files. And I cover all of this in my video, but um, it, it doesn't hurt to reinforce it. Um, not only do you name your image files this way, but you name the files um, your HTML files this way as well. Um, you should never start um, a file name with a capital letter or a numeral. You should never put spaces between words. If you do use, if you, if you do have separate words like my first image, okay, that's three words. And um, rather than put spaces between the words, what you would need to do is use something called camel casing instead, um, or um, you can underscore either one of the two. So the other thing that, um, let me go ahead and get the other file that I have for you. Okay, so um, again, naming files never start with a capital letter numeral. No spaces between use words, um, use underscore or camel casing. The first example that I have down here, my first image is camel casing. You start with a lowercase letter, and then rather than put a space between each of the words, you use a capital letter. That is acceptable. That's what I use very often, or a combination. If you do, if it's easier for you to read it this way, then use an underscore between each word. So it looks almost like um, a space, but it's not. Underscores are considered images, they're you know, characters. Do not name your files like this, myfirstimage.jpg, okay? Um, there are servers that will not accept or are unable to read, <coughs> um, in, uh, files that have, start with a capital letter. There's also one other thing that I forgot to put in here. Um, never use any special characters like ampersands, um, exclamation points, dollar signs, that sort of thing. Um, all of those symbols generally are used in coding. So um, that's one thing that I'll have to add to this. Okay. So general rules for naming files. So um, when you're ready to actually get a file, you can come down here and I'll do a little, create a new tab here of all the other tabs that I have. And um, let's look up an, an image and I'll find, just simply do a Google search. So if you're downloading images from your camera, they can either be um, JPEGs typically, sometimes TIFFs, um, and also um, they can be raw file formats. Those have to be opened in Photoshop and then saved for the web in one of the three file formats that I talked about. And ideally you wanna optimize the images so that you get the best quality, but the smallest file size. That's the whole point of doing this. So, um, so that your page loads quickly and looks good for the person at the other end. So I'll do a simple search and I'm gonna look at, um, uh, actually I'm gonna go to Creative Commons because that's where you can go to, um, get images that are copyrighted, but in a unique way. So for example, if, uh, I don't wanna to donate today. So if you want, they've changed their website a little bit. Um, they've changed it a lot actually. 
So let's go ahead and, and go to use and remix. Okay, so you can see what's involved here that if you want to use a particular image, typically they will, um, people who are sharing using Creative Commons will say that, you know, you're free to use it um, for free. They just want you to give them credit <clears throat> is all. Um, a true, you know, attribute, give them, uh, uh, yeah, let them, let everybody know that they're the ones who did this. So what we can do, let me go ahead and let's go ahead, search the commons. So I'm going to search for content to reuse. So one of the things that I would want to use, this is, you know, if you want to want to make sure that you don't infringe on someone's copyrights. So I'm going to look up um, uh, sunflowers. Let's see what pops up. There you go. Lots of images here. So maybe I want to use this one. This one looks pretty good. Okay. So I can go to the images website and I can download this. Now you can look at this. I can copy this image as is. I can copy this right here. And this has a Creative Commons. Um, it says share under the same terms. Make sure that you give credit to the creator. So um, I can just go ahead and copy this from here. Copy. And now I'm going to go back to Photoshop. And I'm going to go to File, New. Oh, let me just go ahead and open a file for right now. And I'm going to see if I can't paste it inside here. Oh, come on. Everything was kind of bogging down already. That's not good. File, new. There we go. So I'm just going to use um, eight and a half by 11. <clears throat> and then inside this, I'm going to try and paste it, see if that works. Oh, come on. Okay, so let me try and paste. No, it's not working. So let me try again. Let me go to, I'm going to go ahead and let's try this a different way. I'm going to go to images website. Which is on Flickr. And so this was by Tony Donnelly. And <clears throat> generally they will show, you know, different size images. Um, what I want to do though, let's see where it's located. There we go, right here. I wanna use this download, download this photo. So you can use a square, small image, medium, <clears throat> or we can go all the way up to a large image. The original one was considerably larger. Well, I'm just gonna use a medium one for today. I'm gonna to go ahead and download this. Okay. And I wanna open it, um, open with, not preview. I'm gonna open it with Photoshop. So let's go to Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop 22. And it should open. So we go back and we'll be good to go. So there we have the image open. Okay. And now we're ready to use it for the web. But you remember what this is a larger image than maybe what you need. 
So for example, um, the example that I use the, for the, um, this lesson is that I want you to crop the image to maybe 400 by 400 pixels. So to do that, you can use the crop tool and we can go ahead and I can use a specific size, I'll say 400 by 400. So that gives me a square format. And when you do this, and for those of you who aren't familiar with, um, with Photoshop, I strongly recommend that you make sure that delete crop pixel is unchecked so that when you crop it, if you want to go back and restore it, you always can. The next step will be to save it um, as a Photoshop file and put that in a folder that you know that you can retrieve at any time. And now we're ready to save this for the web. So um, remember I said that I already resized this 400 by 400 pixels. Um, I can, one of the ways that I can do that is I can come in here and I can name it sunflower jpg and once i save this file as a photoshop file then what i can do is i can go under um, file and i can say that what i want to do is i want to generate image assets and wherever i've saved that file it will automatically based on the name that i've given it in it it will generate the assets and as I is and you can also have multiples you can have because I want you to do one in JPEG GIF and ping. The other one will be that other ones will be that you're going to go ahead and delete maybe the background and then that will be saved as a GIF and then do it again and then make it a partial opacity and that will be saved as a ping file. Okay. Um, other ways to save for the web <clears throat> and this goes back. Um, many, many years, is that um, what you can also do to make comparisons to go to file and you can export and go to save for web legacy. And now what it will do by default, it usually has GIF. So here's your original and here's a GIF file. And you can see what this offers you if you make sure that you have four up instead of two or optimized. I always like this. That it will show you as a GIF that it's that it will be compressed to a 259, almost 260K file, which is very small. And with an old, old, old 56K modem, it would take 48 seconds to download. That's a long time. It really is kind of a non issue now. Then if we come over here, we can look at the JPEG, because this is what it was originally. And this is at medium quality. And you can see that it's that the compression is even higher. So that instead of 260K, this is dropped down to 81K, very small. And now it only takes 16 seconds, but that's still too much, that's too long. And then we can look at this one over here. And this one is low quality. So if, and again, you can change the quality of JPEGs from here. And when do you use high or low quality? It's when you can't tell the difference. If there is a discernible difference when you zoom in and you look at it, then you wanna use a higher quality. Um, even though it may take you a little bit longer to, um, to download it when uh, it's done. And then when you're ready, if we say that, okay, I'm going to use this medium quality JPEG, select it, it's highlighted in blue. The other thing you may want to take note of, you know, instead of um, 56K modem, if you want to click here, um, what this does is it gives you different, <clears throat> um, depending on the download speed of your internet, you know, what kind of, what do you have? Do you have cable modem or do you have, um, you know, um, what else? Um, T1 lines, that sort of thing. Then um, 
that would be determined. Because if I switch this to cable modem, all of these are going to be one second, especially the JPEGs. The GIF still takes three seconds. That's a long time these days. Um, just to let you know that your entire first page, your index.html, your home page, should not take any longer than 10 seconds for the end user to download. So if you're trying to um, attain an audience that is in middle America, that doesn't have access to high-speed internet, and they're still using old, you know, phone lines with an old modem, then you'll be very conscientious. You need to be very conscientious about <clears throat> the file sizes of your images and um, your page sizes so that they will have um, access to it, uh, to, your, to, your, to your website um, and won't have to wait for any length of time to, to, to open the, the pages. Um, in this day and age, for most places, especially for, for those, of, those of us who are in the arts, most people have high-speed internet um, uh, connections and it's just not an issue anymore. But then when you've selected the one here, as I've said, then you just go ahead and save it and you're done. Okay, so I'll cancel that. Um, for those of you who are new to Photoshop and you want to get rid of this, I'm gonna go ahead, meaning of the background, for example, I'll go ahead and I'll make a copy of this layer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to use, let's see where it's located. Uh, right here, there we go. I'm gonna use the quick selection tool and I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna click and drag in the background. In the first go around, it may not look great, but we can make simple, um, additions to the selection. And you can see that the little marching ants are being added. And then if I come down here and I see what I'm doing here, I can click here and you can see where, whoop, the wrong one. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna select, make the selection again, command on the icon. And I'm gonna say select inverse inverse the selection. And now let's turn that off. Come on. Uh, let's go ahead and option delete. There we go. Now let's do this again. So now that that's inversed, I'll go ahead and I'll do this again. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time. Throw this away, make a copy, turn this back on, and now we'll go ahead and we'll try again. There we go. Now you can see that this needs to be cleaned up. But if you wanted just this silhouette of this image, now you would have to use a gem, a, a GIF, or a ping file to do so. And then if I went ahead and I copied this again, okay. so I would rename this sunflower um, GIF or And then this one, because it's going to be a ping, I'll go ahead and I'll name it sunflower ping. And then when I've, you know, I've updated the assets and it puts it in that asset folder, all these images will automatically be saved and I will have my original Photoshop file as well. But what advantage this gives me now with the ping file is that I can go, come up here to opacity and I can change this. Okay. Let's turn this down. There we go. So, you know, if I wanted to be, be able to see through the image on the internet. It doesn't look like much here, but 
layered on something else, it would, it would you know, work pretty well. So that gives you kind of an overview of what we're doing or what, how we're starting the class. I'm kind of jumping ahead because in the textbook, optimizing images for the web, we're working with images, um, isn't until lesson 10. Um, but I thought it was useful to start with this because um, right away we, we will be using images. And if you're wondering how they, um, they save their files and how they determined what made it um, readily accessible or usable for the web, this is how you do it. And it also is important to understand in web design um, how to properly name your files. That was also why it was important. Okay. So um, unless there are any questions, um, that's all I wanted to cover today. And I can um, help you individually, or if you have any um, questions for me, let me know. And um, we can discuss things individually or as a group, you let me know. And then that will be it for today. Um, next week, we'll be focusing on HTML and CSS. And um, oh, one other thing that you should be doing is go to Wix.com and set up an account with them, a free account. And next week, I will also talk more. I can talk about it a little bit now, but a little bit more. We can talk about um, the the web you will be designing on um, on Wix. It's a free um, service, hosting service, where you design your website um, and publish it automatically um, using their hosting service online. It makes it um, very easy and you can create some pretty nice websites doing that. Um, one of the things that I want you to know about, I'm going to go ahead and switch here. Come on. I'm going to open up Dreamweaver. And this is something that I mentioned on Tuesday, is that I want, um, want to make sure that you have basically four elements to your page, um, or, or, your, your, or at least have one page with four elements or four pages. I want you to have about content. I want you to have um, a resume. I want you to have samples of your artwork. And I want you to have contact so that if people want to contact you. Um, that would be how you do that. Um, and next week, we'll go ahead and I'll. Uh, Dreamweaver is taking forever to load. So I don't know that we'll be doing. There we go. Very sluggish. Apologies. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So as I mentioned on Tuesday, every page should contain these elements. You need a nav bar so that you can navigate through individual sections of a page or in separate pages. You will need a header for your, your website to indicate and to demonstrate and showcase your particular, um, you know, if, if you have a company, um, your logo, the name of your website and that sort of thing that stays consistent from page to page. 
Next, you'll have the main content. Um, you may use a one column in the lessons. We have a three column format. And then you have to have a footer at the very bottom. And the footer gives you the, the copyright information for your website. Um, if there is anything that's time sensitive, when the website was last updated, the content, that sort of thing. But that's um, when you get to Wix website, you'll see that they provide a number of templates for you that um, to, to start you off. And then um, by watching my uh, video tutorials, you'll see and we do it really very briefly because they don't offer really any tutorials. It's all kind of um, intuitive as to how you navigate through all of it. But um, we'll do that a little bit next week as well. Okay, so make sure that you get your Wix web, your Wix account, so you can begin while we're doing the lessons. You can begin working on your Wix website. Okay, um, it's generally I have everybody make a personal website, since most of you are in art in some fashion or design. Um, it would be about you, about promoting you, you and your artwork. Um, if you're in another discipline, then it could be um, a, a website about your dog. Um, I had a, a student one time and her family um, rescued um, dogs, um, stray dogs. And um, so she made her website about that. And it was really very nice. It was a wonderful website when she got done. So the subject matter can be really anything. But that's something you'll have to decide for yourself. Um, if you don't have samples of um, your artwork, then just make it about, um, you know, take photographs and make it about, you know, yourself or your family or, like I say, your pets, um, whatever interests you. But that'll be the subject of your website. Okie doke. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, unless you have questions, and I can stop the recording. Um, and we'll move on today. No, you use all three methods. When you optimize the image, I want you to, to use um, a JPEG. Um, I also want you to use a GIF in the manner that I showed you. And I also want you to use um, a ping. So just as I demonstrated here and will be in the, the video, you'll see that this would be for a JPEG. If by deleting the background, this would be the proper format for the um, a GIF. And then if we turn that off and we did turn this one on and you did one that's that by changing the opacity, this is when you would probably use a ping file. However, you can use a ping file for all of them, but ping files tend to be a fairly large. So for example, if I turn something that I didn't do that I'll go back and do again, when I go back and I say, save for, um, I'm gonna export and I'm gonna go to, again, it's all about, this is the kind of the, the detail mechanics of, of web design. Um, so, here, this is all for JPEGs. So let's select this one. This is very high quality. I'm just going to make it high quality. I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to make this one um, a GIF. And then I'm going to make this one a ping 24-bit. And when you look at the size here, you can see that the JPEG only takes two seconds to download. That um, and this is with uh, one and a half megabits per second. Then three seconds for the GIF, so it's a second more, and six seconds for the ping. Now, for individual files, that doesn't mean much, but if you have lots of images on your website, all of those seconds add up. 
Okay. So in your folder, you'll have the same image, but saved three different ways. One is a JPEG, one is a GIF, and one is a ping. Okay. Yeah, just put it in one Photoshop file and then turn it into Google Drive, right? Yes. But the original will be the Photoshop file, and then you will also export it as JPEG, GIF, and PIN. So your uh, my belief is when you're in web design, your original files should always be Photoshop, but they can't be uploaded to the web. But that's where you can go in and you can add text, you can edit, you can add adjustment layers, you can do whatever you want with it. And then when you're done, you can always um, revise or you can save it as a separate file, um, save it in any file format you want. But then in the end, the only file formats that are acceptable for the web are the JPEG, GIF, and PNG. Okay. And those will be the ones that you use in your website. Yes. And they are turned into Google Drive. Okay. Um, you're free to use your own images. You're also free to get images off the internet. It really doesn't matter. It's, that's not the point of this, this exercise. Okay, we good for today? Have a good weekend. Um, this is a holiday weekend. Martin Luther King um, is on Monday. So there, I don't know how many of you have class, Monday classes, but there aren't any that doesn't affect us. Okay, you guys have a good weekend as well. Okay, I'm gonna uh, say goodbye. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording and um, see you next week.